There are several different ways of defining tendon geometry in RM, and I'm going to show a couple of them. The first one I'll show is the method that's actually used in the pre-stressing basic example, which is the example uh, given in the basic training, um, and it comes with RM as well. So what you're looking at here is the bridge from the pre-stressing basic example, um, except on a straight alignment instead of a curved one. So this is a uh, three-span uh, hollow box bridge. And defining tendons comes after you've defined the bridge model itself. So if I open up the modeler, um, you'll see the uh, defined axis and then also the cross section and then the segment as well. Uh, for the superstructure and the pier. So I've built this entire model. Um, but one thing I want to point out before I go on to define the tendons is that um, there are certain points within the cross section which I'm going to reference later. Um, this cross section uh, I've cleaned up a little bit. Um, it, it is the normally defined uh, cross section here with all the construction lines um, and you see other reference sets in here for reinforcement as well. If I turn off uh, some of those things, I still have visible, there's two points in this cross section which will show up later. There's a stress point at the top of the section in the very middle here, and it's called FI-T for uh, the stress point at the top, and there's one right at the middle of the section in the bottom called FI-B for bottom. So if you keep that in mind, you'll see these two points come up later. In the analyzer part of RM uh, to define the tendons you'll find that under in the menu tree under structure um, and then tendons and the first thing I'll need to do is create um, the name of the tendon um, in this example I'm going to create one master tendon profile uh, that I could then use uh, to create um, slave tendon profiles for uh, so all I would have to do is lay out the geometry for the master tendon and then say that there were you know three slave tendons um, and this is the way it's actually done in the pre-stressing basic example again um, and this is so this method here I'm using for uh, defining a tendon group uh, that's going to be a representative tendon group or a preliminary design tendon group so in the upper window I'll insert a new tendon and I'll just leave this, call it tendon number one, um, and change this to a master profile. And then um, I don't need to put in any other geometry information since I'm just going to be using this as a profile, um, although um, RM will ask me to give it a material, um, but that's okay. So after you define a tendon, um, you have to then define which elements it passes through. Uh, and this will be um, whatever elements a tendon passes through is an, uh, a beam element that is affected when this tendon gets stressed. So if in actual 3D this tendon passes through all of the superstructure elements of the bridge, I know that those are these elements from element 101 to 135 are all the elements over the length of the uh, superstructure. So I'll say, OK, uh, that this tendon profile is passing through all of those. Then I come to the geometry tab. And this is where I'll start to actually input uh, the geometry for this tendon profile. Um, <clears throat> in the lower window, then, um, I can start inputting points. Um, and these will be reference points for the geometry. When I open this up, you see the tendon point uh, dialog definition box. and um, you can first choose a type. Uh, normal is for internal tendons. The rest of these options are for external tendons. Um, uh, so we'll just choose normal uh, for what I'm going to explain here. Then it comes down to this box. And this part here is um, the location of the tendon uh, within a certain element. So the reference element that we're talking about here is element 101. That's at the beginning of my bridge. Um, and then this X on L is a distance along the length of the element. So 0 is the beginning, and then 1 would be the end of this element. Um, so that sort of defines the, uh, uh, the X coordinate uh, within this particular element. And then the Y and Z coordinates within the particular element are defined here. 
So <clears throat> the Y and Z uh, position uh, need to have a reference where they, uh, you know, what is this Y distance being referenced from? So you have um, three different options for that. There's element, which means that um, any offset in the Y and Z direction, so in the cross-section plane, any offset that you input will be relative to uh, the center of gravity of that cross-section. If I chose node, then either of these offsets would be from the node um, at that point. And if I choose a uh, cross-section point, uh, what I can do is choose any reference point within the cross-section um, just to use it as a, a reference point um, and then um, offset from that point. So for this first point in this tendon profile, I'm actually going to leave this at the uh, center of gravity uh, of this <coughs> um, um, cross-section here. And then below that, um, you have values for alpha 1 and alpha 2. And these are a way to fix the uh, rotation angle. Um, so if you uh, drew a tangent uh, to the uh, tendon profile at this point, um, then you could fix the angle to it. Um, so they can either be given some value or be set to free, uh, which means that RM will choose, um, based on the other points, based on the profile uh, that you put in, RM will choose the angle or allow it to be uh, whatever will um, create the least amount of energy uh, or the least losses. And then this value actually for defining alpha 1 uh, a horizontal angle and alpha 2 a vertical angle, again it has to be an angle relative uh, to some baseline uh, which can be um, based on the element center of gravity on the node or on some cross section point. Uh, so for this first point though we'll leave this free and say OK. Um, and now this point has shown up in the lower window. Uh, if I click the info button, um, this will start to show along the bridge this tendon profile I'm defining, although with just the first point, all we'll see is just one point there now. The next point then, um, I can just insert after, right after this point I'll insert another one. Um, and now as I move along the length of the bridge, I'm going to be referencing for this point uh, element 104. Um, and <clears throat> Again, I'll reference the beginning of element 104, uh, but this time uh, the tendon is not going to be passing through, or this tendon profile will not pass through the center of gravity uh, of the element. Um, it's going to be uh, passing through somewhere near the bottom uh, of the cross section. So in order to do that, um, I could choose the node um, and input um, in the y direction or the vertical direction some negative value that would put me uh, near uh, the bottom of the cross section. Um, this is um, can be sometimes inconvenient if you have a variable depth cross section uh, such as we have here. Um, I don't know, I might not know exactly how tall uh, the cross section is at this point so I don't know what to put in for this value. But what I can do is choose a cross section point to reference to. And the cross section point uh, I'll be able to choose is any reference point within the cross section. So what I showed earlier in the modeler uh, was that there were those stress points defined. So I had at the very bottom of the section a stress point and at the very top of the section another stress point. So if I choose this bottom point, no matter what the depth of the cross section is, that point's always at the very bottom of the section and it's always in the middle. So I can say OK and then uh, my offset, uh, since the tendon duct is not passing right through the very bottom of the section, uh, this is actually uh, 20 centimeters above the very bottom of the section. Um, and then I can set this free again here. Now we'll start to see this tendon profile come together. If I zoom in now, we see that first point that was defined at the center of gravity. Um, and now we're somewhere near, very close to the bottom of the cross section at the beginning of element 104. I'll add another point in here. Um, We'll say now the reference element will be 108. Uh, I'll leave this x on l at 0. And I'll again let this pass through the center of gravity of element 108. Leave these angles free. Check this geometry again, and we'll start to see this curved shape here. Since we left all of these uh, fixed angle values as free, um, there is some angle 
to these to the tendon profile at these points. Add another point in here now. Element 111 will be our reference, uh, and the uh, tendon profile is now going to be passing near the top of the cross section. Uh, so again, I could choose node here um, and input some negative. Um, EY value since I know that the node is right at the center of the section um, and at the uh, topmost fiber. Or I can again choose a cross section point. Um, so I'll actually go ahead and again choose one of those stress points. Now I'll choose the top stress point. I know it's at the top fiber of the section, um, uh, right in the middle of the cross section. And I'm just using that as a reference and saying that now that uh, this tendon profile is passing 40 centimeters below that below the very top of the section. And I'll leave these uh, angles as free. Now again, if I zoom in here, we'll start to see this um, the curved shape take, uh, uh, take shape here for this tendon profile. Now there's a few more points which I'm going to input here. Now I've finished filling out the rest of the points for this tendon profile and I'll be able to see now when I zoom in here um, this tendon has been defined over the whole length of the bridge or this profile has been defined over the whole length um, and the reason for using a master profile um, is that if I wanted to then have um, three tendon groups say um, basically one in the first span one in the second span and one in the third span um, for uh, this bridge um, being erected in a span by span uh, procedure, what I could do then <clears throat> is define um, a tendon, call this 101, which will be just the uh, uh, first span tendon. Again, this is internal, and this is going to be a slave profile. So if I choose a slave profile for this tendon type or the geometry type, um, then I just choose the master profile, which was number one, and I'll say, now I can input real number, like, say this is a group of 12 tendons, um, put in uh, the area for a single tendon, the area for a single duct, um, some other values in here, um, and then say, OK. And now all I have to do is only define this tendon for uh, a certain number of elements. So this is not going to pass over the whole length of the bridge. It's just going to follow this master profile through only these elements of the superstructure. Now I don't have to define the geometry for this. It's going to take its geometry from the master profile. To see this master profile on the uh, actual 3D model of the bridge, um, I can go ahead and recalc and just do a structure check and a cross-section calculation. And now uh, I'm actually going to uh, turn off uh, the element bodies. This is so it won't draw an extruded view. Um, and I'll see, um, you can kind of see in there, it's a little light, but that tendon profile that we defined, and if I even turn off the cross sections, it'll be even more obvious. So this is the master tendon profile that we've defined is showing up in here now. And actually that tendon 101 is showing up too. It just happens to follow the same geometry, so it's on top of there.